Hi everybody, very welcome to Mentor, it's yet another video podcast, I hope you're all doing fantastic as always. So, today on the podcast I am going to be talking about TCAS, Traffic Collision and Avoidance System. Uh, I'm going to give you a short and brief um, system description and then I'm going to go into how we as pilots handle uh, a traffic warning and a resolution advisory and also how we interact with our traffic control if that would happen. So um, if you want a more in-depth technical description of the TCAS system, I suggest that you just go and Google it, Google TCAS system description and you will find plenty of information. So I'm not going to go too deep into the system or the technical aspect of it, um, but I'm more going to focus on how we as pilots handle the situation. An overview of the system, in order for you to have a working TCAS system, it needs to be installed in the aircraft and most bigger airliners have it installed. Um, general aviation aircraft tend not to have it installed unless it's very, very modern. Um, but you also need something called a transponder. Uh, most of you have probably heard the term transponder. Um, if you look at the incident with uh, the Malaysian Airlines Flight 370 that disappeared, there was a lot of talks in media about how the transponder was turned off. Uh, and that gives you a little bit of an idea of what a transponder actually is. Now, a transponder is a little radio box. And essentially, it's designed to give a secondary radar echo to air traffic control. That was the primary purpose of TCAS when it was, or sorry, of uh, a transponder when it was launched. So um, if air traffic control only has raw radar, they will only see on the radar screen a blimp, okay? They will see that there's something out on the screen, but they cannot identify it. With a transponder, air traffic control will be able to assign a specific code so that they can um, distinguish one aircraft from a different aircraft and if you have what's called a mode Sierra transponder which we do have in the 737 it will also give you information about what the uh, air crew has put on the MCP panel so they can see if we have put the wrong altitude in the different from what we've been cleared for example and many many other things as well so a TCAS system will provide, will send out signals that identifies the aircraft and that gives the raw radar signal a, an identification. And also, there's no need for a raw radar signal. So with a secondary radar system, which most air traffic control units are using at the moment, it's actually sending out uh, information about where the aircraft is situated, Okay, both altitude normally and also where it is on the map. So that's what a, a transponder is. Now, TCAS has used those radio um, signals in order for transponders in different aircraft to talk to each other as well. So not only talking to air traffic control, but also to each other. So essentially, one aircraft is saying, hey, I'm over here at this altitude. And the other aircraft is saying, well, hello, I'm over here and I'm on this altitude and I'm moving this way. And by comparing the relative um, position and altitude of two different aircraft, the transponders can then talk to each other basically and say, hey, I'm getting a little bit closer to you now. And the other one will say, oh yes, and I'm actually climbing towards your level. And the way that the system then responds is that it will give, it will assign on our navigation display that we have in our aircraft, it will assign different aircraft different importance level depending on where they are in terms of uh, geographical situation uh, and in terms of altitude and also in terms of how quickly they are moving towards us. So for example an aircraft that is in the same geographical position as us but maybe 12,000 feet below us we will not see. However an aircraft that is 12,000 feet below us in more or less the same geographical situation but is climbing very very fast like a fighter jet for example it will pop up when TCAS thinks that this is a potential conflict. And that's, to make it easy, that is how the system is, is working. It's constantly interrogating other transponders around it, saying, where are you? I am here, and so on. Uh, based on that, it then categorizes the traffic into a couple of different categories. You will have what's called other traffic. Other traffic uh, is shown like a um, an unfilled square, and I'll show you a picture of it up here. Uh, and that is 
traffic that is outside of six nautical miles and outside of 1200 feet from the position of our own aircraft. Now, if that aircraft would then come inside of six nautical miles and be within 1200 feet, so let's say it's a thousand feet above us and it's five miles away from us, then it will become proximate traffic. And proximate traffic is shown as a filled square, a filled diamond. And as you can see up here on the picture. Now, when proximate traffic is getting closer and closer, then the transponders are starting to talk to each other and they're starting to warn when the proximate traffic is, let's say it's the same level and it's coming towards, when the, the transponder predicts that it's about 45 seconds away from a potential collision, it will issue what's called a traffic warning and it will sound traffic, traffic. When that happens, the uh, filled diamond will become a yellow dot and we will see it on our navigation display and it will give a fairly good uh, relative uh, position indication. So we can see where it is on the navigation display and we can look out and see where it is. It will also show tendencies. So if the aircraft is, for example, descending with more than 500 feet per minute, we will see a downwards arrow. And if it's climbing, it's the same, and it would show relative altitude next to it. Now, if the aircraft continues to get closer and closer, then a, the, the traffic advisory will turn into what's called a resolution advisory at approximately 20 to 25 seconds from a predicted collision. Now, if a pilot gets a traffic advisory, we don't actually do anything we, except we're looking outside. Both pilots are looking outside and the one who is pilot flying is going to start getting him or herself ready to maneuver. Okay, but we're not doing anything and it's fairly important that we're not changing much at that stage because the transponders are talking to each other and they're now getting ready for the potential resolution advisory. And if we start to change headings, for example, or vertical speeds, then the transponders will have to recalculate what to do in case of resolution advisory. So at this stage, we are looking outside, trying to see where the traffic is. And we're also potentially talking to our traffic control and querying, asking them, what about this traffic that we have here? But the pilot flying is getting ready to react. So if the traffic advisor turns into a resolution advisory, it will give a clear indication of what you have to do. So it will tell you descend, descend, or climb, climb, for example. And there are many, many calls like that. When me, if I'm the pilot flying, hear that, I will disconnect the autopilot and auto throttle, and I will pitch the aircraft. It's always going to be pitch, it's never going to be turn. I will pitch the aircraft outside of a small red trapezoid that comes on my primary flight display. So the key here is to be just outside of the trapezoid. It's not to pull away like a crazy person, away, you know, well 10 degrees above. It's just to follow the resolution advisory and be just outside of the trapezoid. And why is that? Well, it is because depending on what the other, tra other um, traffic is doing, the, the um, transponders might decide that actually what we're doing now, it's not enough. So it might go from a climb, climb to a descend uh, call out, which means that if you are pitching too much, you are going to have a problem to follow a subsequent uh, resolution advisory. So just pitch yourself outside. And also it's important because you know, you are 20 seconds approximately away from a collision. It means that you're actually, you, know, you have plenty of time. Um, and you don't want to do something ab abrupt because people in the back will not know about this. And if the fasten seatbelt sign is off, uh, the cabin crew might be out with the trolleys, people might be walking in the cabin, and a very sudden maneuver might actually hurt people in the back. So it's important that you do this uh, smoothly, nicely, but keep yourself outside. Pilot monitoring in this case will just monitor that pilot flying is doing his or her actions and also they will call out traffic control. And the only thing they will say is the call sign Mentor 360 uh, TCAS climb or TCAS descent. Now air traffic control 
they should have prevented this from happening in the first place. Now, for some reason, something has not worked. Okay, Air traffic control can come in and tell us to do things like, okay, I maintain altitude or do this or do that. What's very important is that if you're inside of a resolution advisory, you cannot follow air traffic control. You follow the resolution advisory because at that point, the resolution advisory is going to have a much more exact um, idea of what's going on. Like the transponders know more than air traffic control in this case. So when if we do get conflicting information from air traffic control and a resolution advisory, you follow the resolution advisory very important so if air traffic control is selling you something the pilot monitoring will just come in and respond and say unable tcas climb or unable tcas descent so we continue to fly uh, monitoring looking out to see where the traffic is and once we are outside of the collision area so the aircraft has passed us below or above or on the side or whatever it might be the tcas will give clear of conflict once that's done, then we can start resuming our um, altitude that or flight level that we left. So pilot flying remembers that we're still flying manually. So you start to climb or descend back to whatever your last assigned level was. Uh, ask pilot monitoring for what modes you want, because you're probably not going to be in the correct pitch mode. So for example, level change, make sure the altitude is correct trim the aircraft and then pilot flying is going to go from right to left on the mcp starting with engaging the autopilot verifying that all the fma flight mode and oscillator modes are correct and then out the throttle pilot monitoring meanwhile will contact air traffic control again and say that we are now clear of conflict we are descending back to or we're climbing back to whatever level or altitude that you were last assigned so that's essentially how it's done. It needs to be done accurately, smoothly, and you need to remember that resolution advisory takes precedence of any air traffic control clearance that they're giving meanwhile you're in the resolution advisory. All right, that makes sense? Good. Not much more to it than that, of course, you have to file a report, uh, an AirProx report about this when you get back from your flight duty. Your company will have procedures and how to do this, but it's really important that these um, that that's being followed and is being reported accurately. Some cases, this might be a good idea to pull the CVR circuit breaker when you get down as well, especially if the uh, resolution advisory is due to you not following a, uh, a clearance correctly or something being misunderstood between you and air traffic control. But your company will have procedures for that. So guys, uh, if you have more questions about this, then feel free to ask them as always. I hope that you've enjoyed this one and I wish you all the best as always and I'll see you next time.